All right, let's welcome in Josh Hart. My guy, my guy, my former roommate, Josh. Josh, I was thinking about this today. Last season, I lived with you for a large chunk of my Pelicans tenure. And I saw you every day. I ate nearly every meal with you. And I was thinking about this. When was the last, we FaceTime all the time. When was the last time I actually saw you in person? Was it the last game I played for the Pelicans yep. in March? Yeah, yep. last <laughs> last game of the season was the was the last one, bro. Were you? Yeah, it was the last game of the season, bro. Was you had COVID? You had COVID at the wedding? Yeah, I didn't go to his wedding because I had COVID in August. Yeah. yeah and then man. when you guys played in Dallas towards the end of the season, it was right after I had re re aggravated my heel injury, mm -hmm. so I had gone back to New York that day. Yep to get a get an opinion another opinion on it remember you got you you messed it up uh pre-game memphis and we were playing you guys then like the next game i was like good to see my guy and then i talked to heather he was like she was like yeah he he like aggravated it so he went up to new york so i was just like ah, oh, he probably just wants to go up to new york and just hang out with the fam so i was like he's not slick because he did I, I know but it's okay <laughs> i came back to the team shortly thereafter by the way You've posted this on social media, so I'll just say this. For Josh is a very close friend of mine. So as a congratulatory gift for his free agency and for um, uh, his wedding, I had bought him his birth year in Latosh, a 95 Latosh. And I still have not seen him in person to give it to him. So I'm hoping when you guys come through next week, I can give it to you. That's That's my hope. Yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll make sure I'll make sure I'll find a way <laughs> to get that bottle somehow, some way. Um, I think we should start with with you, really. Um, you know, we've had you on the pod before, not as a featured guest, but just as a as, as a drafter, um, which yeah, I, know you're I wasn't little... worthy enough for, for <laughs> my own episode. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I finally got it. Hey, I'm happy. Well, in fairness, in fairness to Jalen, we, we wanted to have you guys on together. Um, you know, it wasn't, you know, but whatever, we'll settle for you. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, you're having a career year. I actually your your last six games, um, you're averaging 19 eight and a half rebounds over five assists over a steal a game on 55% from the field, 40% from three. You still can't shoot free throws. You're shooting 73 from free throw line. But I mean, this is the best stretch of your career by far. What do you think it is that has allowed you to play at this level? Um, it's, it's really mainly, uh, Willie. Uh, and I think the the freedom that he's given me, cause you know, we talked about it all the time, um, you know, one of the biggest things in the league, you know, for guys is having that freedom and that that ability to go out there and play basketball the way you, you know, you want to play and the way you've normally been playing. And um, uh, that's something that he's allowing me to do. Uh, you know, I'm not, you know, last year, you know, <laughs> how frustrating uh, it was, you know, for me last year. Um, it was really just kind of uh, three and D standing in the corner, um and you know that was about it but now i'm able to make plays i'm able to do ball screens handoffs um you know play are going through me which you know is something that's um great because it's not even me getting getting a look at it as shot it's just the you know being able to you know touch the ball getting in the rhythm and those kind of things so i really got to give a lot of um the success that i'm having right now credited to to willie because he's just letting me go out there and just hoop I think there's a there's a big difference, and you mentioned the word freedom, um, and and certainly as an NBA player, your confidence can waver at times. But there's a difference between being being asked to be a ball mover versus being asked to be a playmaker, or just being in a role where you naturally are a playmaker. And that to me has been a huge shift. That stat line I just read you. Did you envision at any point in time having a six game stretch? And I know it's six games, but you, you've you've proven that you are more than just a three and D guy this season. Yeah, um, you know, I always dreamt of it and, and, and kind of saw myself as more than that. And I've and you can go back to interviews. I said, you know, coming out the draft, I was like, I think I'm more than a three and D kind of player. Um, but I just never had that opportunity to really do that. And 
know, if you think about it, you know, when you're a rookie, you know, you just you you, you shut up and you do whatever you, <laughs> whatever you have to do to get on the court. Um, and then, you know, after that, it was, you know, we had Braun and Doe and all them. So a lot of playmakers and, you know, that wasn't the role that, you know, we needed for me to do at the team. And um, the last two years was kind of like the same thing. There wasn't the role that was needed or asked of me. And I tried to just fulfill whatever was asking me to, to help the team. But now it's um, the role is kind of what I want it to be. And, you know, it's something that I've really I've seen, seen myself uh, as a basketball player for, I don't know, since I could dribble, you know, playing this kind of role. And it's just a blessing I'm able to actually do it and, you know, not stand in the corner. <laughs> Josh, what's been your favorite thing about Willie so far? The positivity, bro. The, the, the positivity is the biggest thing uh, because I think, like, like it's, it's night and day. And, and Jay-Z can, you know, talk about it a little bit uh, last year. Like, it, it just wasn't, you know, a, a positive thing last year. Uh, like, the, the vibe wasn't. It was just kind of just, uh, you know, negativity. And I think that was the biggest thing. So, for me, it's the, you know, every every game – uh, you know, after every game, you know, practice the the gym. We're, we're we're playing music. It's a it's a good vibe to it. And when you have that, um, you know, success follows. So he has that positivity. Wants to keep building guys up. Wanting to keep coaching them up. And you know, I think that was the biggest thing. I, I'm I'm certainly not gonna shit on Stan because you know everybody knows how I feel about Stan. Stan has uh, been in, had, had was instrumental in my career and and really. Um, taught me a ton when I played for him in Orlando there there's there's I, I believe there was an effort last year and and from lessons learned in the past from Stan to be more positive um the thing with Willie I, so I played with Willie in in uh in LA my first year and then he got released that summer and then spent a season in Orlando and then I think he was out of the league and once he was out of the league I would get calls from people uh, you know, who, who, who do you think we should hire in a GM position? Who do you think we should hire as an assistant coach? And I told people <laughs> over and over again, like he's the first person that came out of my mouth every time, Willie Green, Willie Green, Willie Green. Um, and whatever, we're going to have him on the podcast soon, whatever he learned uh, in his time in, in Golden State, whatever he learned from Monty, like to me, he's, he's built such a resume and such a deep understanding, not only basketball, but how to deal with people and how to coach. And so much of NBA coaching is that. And I, I there was a story recently um, uh, in New Orleans about his positivity. And that's, that's, that's one of the biggest things is like he is just so mild-mannered, even-keeled at all times. There was a great clip of him earlier in the season during a timeout coaching one of the young fellas up. And it just speaks to who he is as a person. And he's one of the most pleasurable people I've ever been around in the NBA. Coach, assistant, uh, player, teammate, whatever you whatever you want. He is as good as it gets as a human being. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and we, we had uh, – I was actually kind of nervous at, at first, you know, coming back because I, you know, I, I didn't talk to him, any, you know, the whole time during free agency or anything like that. So I didn't really know who he was as a person. I heard good things from Mikel Bridges and, and a couple guys that – um, I knew that, you know, I had run-ins with him. Um, but we sat down before the, the start of the season, even before the start of training camp. And, you know, just the vibe that I got from him was just, you know, th that exact same thing. Just a, a great person, first and foremost, off the court. And that really trans translates onto the court in terms of his coaching method, in terms of building guys up, um, you know, wanting to build uh, high character uh, in all of us. So I think that's the biggest thing with him is just, you know, whenever we do, you know, do things, you know, positive things, um, you know, th there's positive reinforcement. And I think that's something that we were really missing um, in, in last year. So when you guys got off to that slow start this season, um, Zion's out, uh, which we'll we'll get to in a second. Uh, Brandon's down uh, with an injury. And there there's there's a chance where y your team can sort of let go of the rope and allow negativity, allow that doom and gloom that happens in NBA season to creep in. Um, was it, was it just Willie being positive? There has to be something else there that allowed you guys to sort of uh, not, not fall into that rhythm and, and continue to play great basketball. 
Um, I, I think it's a, a th- you know, probably just two two different things is um, I think first and foremost, really the, the positivity, because um, if you have if you're losing games and then you're coming in and it's uh, uh, the gym is quiet, it's gloomy, it's negativity around, um, you're not going to be successful and, and you're going to fall into that dark hole that you're talking about. And L is going to keep piling up and piling up. Um, so his positivity really helped, you know, with that. And then just the, the character of guys that we had, um, you know, and, and have is, is, is great. We knew that we were young. Um, a lot of us are, you know, first time playing with each other with Jonas and, um, you know, Herb is starting, Trey Murphy, Kyra, you know, it was obviously a second year. Devontae's new. So we knew it was going to take a little bit of time. We didn't have Z, B.I. was kind of in and out. So the positivity that that Willie brought to us on an everyday basis and then just the high character guys that we had, we knew we were going to turn it around. Um, you know, we <laughs> wish we did it a little bit sooner, but uh, we knew, you know, wins were going to um, – they were going to come and we were, you know, continuing to build for the future. And, um, you know, a, a lot of that is accredited to, to Willie, honestly. Josh, you have a philosophy on how you approach rebounding? Because, JJ, where, where does Josh rank in terms of best rebounding guards in the league? Because, I mean, in my opinion, it's definitely top five, maybe number one. Yeah, he's 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 in the top five for sure. I, this was actually my next question for him, Tom, so I'm glad you brought it. I, I call it a thirst. There, There's... It's weird because you get called out if you're selfish with shots, but you would never get called out for being selfish defensive rebounding in <laughs> defensive <laughs> rebounding. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Like the, the I guess time to answer your question is go get the fucking ball. I, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, especially, you know, for for me, I know um it it kind of, you know, all started, I guess, high school. Um, you know, the way for me to get on the court, you know, my freshman year was playing defense and rebounding, um, as most, most of young guys on a team do. So I just built it from there and it was always just, you know, I had a, a desire to win and, you know, you, you got it most of the times to win, you got to play defense. You got to out rebound the other team and do those kind of things. So. Um, that was a big part of it. And then especially this year, last year and this year, a lot of my offense comes from getting the rebound and just hauling my ass. The JJ knows my kamikaze, left, right, wrong foot, right hand layup. Um, I get like two or three those two or three of those a game, you know, I or I get fouled and get to the free throw line. So um, you know, a lot of those points come from, <laughs> come from defensive rebounding. So um I know that's kind of a way for me to kind of stay involved and, uh, you know, have the ball in my hand. It's remarkable to me that in your fifth year, having seen you do that move in game, both as your teammate and as an opponent and now as a fan, you still get to that move two or three times a game and it works. Like, where the fuck is that on the scouting report? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> where is it? The thing is, like, it, it's for sure on there because I hear, I hear coaches when I'm driving just yelling, he's going right. And – so it like I know it's on the scout report. I know they talk about it, but as, as you know, you know it, it's it, it takes it, it's a split second. So if I'm I'm running full speed at you, and the first time I really uh, like the first t- like the move that I make is going left. So I'm going full speed at you, and the first time the first step I go is left. Like you're going to think I'm going left, but that's why I just go left, right, and there, and I just. I've I've done it so much that I'm able to you know make uh, uncontested layups, contested layups, so I'll, you know get to the free throw line. So um, there's only been like one time, actually two times. No, yeah, two times. But I think I I got blocked. One was Drew in the preseason game, and Drew <laughs> and Drew was running back. <laughs> he's in Milwaukee. He's running back, and he's call, and he's telling me what I'm gonna do. So in my mind, I'm like, shit, I can't do it. I gotta go left. Block that shit. And then uh, I think the the guy from uh, the Wizards, the tall European dude that comes off the bench, I think it's like De- Desi or, or something like that, he he got me on a block going left. I guess that's probably the reason why I don't go left. I guess I get blocked. So, um, yeah, it doesn't really get stopped too much. So I was I was going to bring up the Drew play because that was the first game of our, our – our second game of our preseason last year. Yeah. Was like, our first game against Drew. 
<laughs> and he he I mean he just like he told you he he knew what was coming and he blocked it. That was such a great moment. It right, was it was. Good. And if you like, I wish you can get like the clip of like his face and my face because like we're running down. I swear we're at like like half court in between half court and three point line. He's saying it. I'm kind of smiling because I know I'm like, oh shit, we're gonna and like for me, Drew was like one of the best defenders I ever seen, just in terms of like his IQ, his quickness, uh, his uh, strength, athleticism, and then his like just his hand speed, how quick his hands are. So I'm just like, I I know if there's one guy in the league that this move is not going to work on, it's going to be Drew. And I'm just like, show sure enough, the first time we play him, is <laughs> I have the opportunity to go into my kamikaze. And it just did not work. Your free agency last summer was one of the most fascinating free agencies that I've seen in recent memory. Um, and you and I talked a bunch prior to free agency, during free agency, um, kind of when the contract you know was was happening and you were <coughs> negotiating the terms of whatever. But you were one of the last guys to sign as a restricted free agent. You can get sort of caught up in the numbers game and. Um, if you don't get an offer sheet early, uh, you, you kind of have to go back to the team and, and, and they kind of have leverage at the, essentially that two or three week period while this was happening, can you just describe <laughs> the angst that you were under? Yeah, bro. Um, and, and, and you know, it kind of talked to you, uh, you know, th throughout the whole process of a man, it, it was by far the most stressful, uh, that I, that, that, you know, of my entire life, those, those two, three weeks every day just seemed like it was, you know, the, just, you know, 30 hours, 40 hours each day. It was just like, I, you know, when talking to, you know, talking to my agents, you know, trying to get something done. And it's just day by day is going on. And um, it was frustrating for me because I think um, some of it, as you know, um, Last year was just a uh, not not a good vibe in turn not even in terms of play but just uh, energy around uh, you know uh, the the team that we had um, you know so going into free agency you know I, I didn't have a um, great outlook on on that just because I just had you know such a bad taste in my mouth about last year um, because it was just a, a frustrating year and for me I just I. I wanted to get away from basketball, you know, you know, that summer, you know, it was, you know, I think one of the few years I had in my life where I just hated playing basketball. Uh, and that, that left a bad taste in my mouth. So I was going into free agency. I think part of it was I was going in mad. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think I would, I might change things. I don't know, because that was a long two weeks, <laughs> but, um, um, you know, I think everything kind of worked out as best as it could. And, um, you know, I, it, looking back, it was, a, you know, a great move to come back here because Willie has really um, gave me a new uh, outlook on, on basketball and a new, you know, um, way I'm being perceived by, you know, other people in, in the league. How many times, how many times a day were you checking your phone? And did you get to a point? during that period of time where you just left your phone for hours at a time because you just were sick of checking it? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I remember, bro, I would like, I, I remember to start a free agency, me and uh, uh, my wife, Shannon, um, we were in, we, were, we did the summer in Miami and we're at this little Asian spot and, um, you know, you're going in, you're thinking, uh, you know, I, you know, this will be over, you know, in a, a day, maybe two max. And I'm seeing all the deals go by. Um, I'm seeing, you know, Zoe, you know, Zoe going to Chicago, getting paid us. And I'm seeing all these, all these guys. And I'm just like, bro, like my phone's quiet. <laughs> like, th th there's nothing, nothing going on, bro. And the next day, was kind of like the same thing. And I'm looking at my phone, I'm looking at Twitter, um, he's looking at hoops hype, looking at the rumors, seeing what's going on. And um, it, it got to a point where I like deleted uh, from my, like, my page, uh, from my phone, I deleted Instagram, deleted um, Twitter. 
uh, and, and just, yeah, like you said, this would we'll just leave it at, at random places in the house just because I'm like, I'm so tired of looking at it. Like, I just want this shit to be over. Um, and, you know, when it was, um, you know, it, it was a, bre- you know, a, a kind of like a monkey off my back. Um, wasn't fully happy <laughs> with how things happened, but it was uh, uh, a breath of, uh, you know, just relief, sigh of relief. Well, John, we, usually, we usually talk about this with guys on draft night, um, but you're obviously in a different position. You've accomplished a ton in the league already, but does that leave like any kind of like chip on your shoulder or anything like that when it's that extended amount of time for someone who's, you know, done what you've done. It's not like you haven't, you know, put up numbers since you've been in the league. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I was on some like, fuck everybody type shit. Like, like even yeah. like the new Orleans. I was like, fuck new Orleans. Like I, like my, my this shit should have been over the first day of free agency, the second day of free agency. Um, so that was kind of my mentality, honestly, to, to all 30 teams, all 30 GMs, to all, all 30 coaches, whoever the, whoever the fuck it was, that wasn't me, bro. Like, it was it was really just like, man, like, fuck everybody. I got to go out there and and show what I can do. And, um, you know, now, you know, I got – I'm not, I'm not going to say fuck Willie because Willie <laughs> really <laughs> Willie's giving me, uh, you know, a, a rebirth of my career, you know, kind of so to say. But um, that that's kind of how I felt, honestly, from – you know, the start of free agency to to now, really, is just like, I just got to go out there and hoop. You know what I mean? Things didn't happen how I thought they should have happened. And now I got to go out there and, you know, prove to people again, you know, the, the kind of player I am and, um, you know, what I think I'm worth. On a, on a much lighter note, do you, <laughs> remember, do you remember what bottles you celebrated with once the contract was done? Yeah, I didn't really do nothing crazy. Like I guess I had a bottle of uh, actually some my some my Jay Hart seller page. I, I would have to look. Um, it was like a bottle. Way of to Don- plug! Way to plug the secondary <laughs> IG page. Way to uh, plug Jay Hart uh, sellers. If you want to know what Josh is drinking, <laughs> go yeah, to Jay Hart sellers. Um, I gotta see, but like I don't really remember, it, bro. Because like, like it was cool, but like even even after I got my deal, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with. You know how free agency uh went i wasn't happy with the deal so i, I didn't really celebrate too much i, I had a o2 dom um o2 dom and a 18 Claude to rose do jack which is definitely too young but um yeah i didn't i thought i was gonna like bring out like some like DRC that I have, uh, I have like a bottle of 95 Romeo that my family got me for my birthday. Um, I thought I was going to bring out these bottles and I just, I just wasn't happy. Uh, you know, even, even after I agreed to the deal, I just wasn't happy. And I didn't feel like I had, you know, much to celebrate, honestly. Yeah. It's public information. So I'm not putting you on blast here, but the, the, obviously Josh is making a lot of money this year. <laughs> the reason he's not happy is because <laughs> the second and third year of his deals are both structured very oddly and they're non-guaranteed. So I, I, I get the frustration. I, I, I definitely get it. Um, and, and to be clear, Josh, uh, for any normal human being, an O2 Dom, <laughs> Perignon <laughs> Champagne, <laughs> And a 2018 Dujac Claude Roche is baller wine. Let's oh, be very yeah. clear on that. <laughs> this yeah, is very clear. For sure, for sure. It's, de- it's definitely, don't get me wrong, it's definitely good <laughs> it good bottles of wine. But, like, you know, going in, even I was talking to you, bro, like, I'm like, I was thinking, like, I'm getting, you know, guaranteed, you know, four year guaranteed deal. Um, and I was like, I'm going to, like, I'm going to just open some, some crazy shit. You know, I'm going to open some Latash. I'm going to open some. Um, some old Jack, some Rosh. I like. I was gonna open like in my mind. I had like five bottles of wine. I was gonna open and just like in, in celebration. And um, needless to say, those five bottles of wine are sitting in the cellar, not open. <laughs> this is this is the problem though with human beings. This is the problem with human beings. We I, I'll, I'll share an example of of one of my free agencies. But what happens to NBA players in free agency? We all do this. We set expectations fairly high we want a certain number of years we want a certain number uh or you know a certain uh value on our contract per year and when that doesn't happen in free agency 
it leaves a bitter taste in our mouth. And then you get later on in your career and you're like, oh, that was actually, it turned out to be a really good thing. On my honeymoon, I had to wait 10 days because everybody was waiting on LeBron to sign. <laughs> that was the summer of the decision. So he signs with Miami and I'm at a, a, a restaurant in Rome with my wife and my agent calls me and he tells me the terms of the Chicago deal. Chicago, they were trying to get LeBron. Now they had some cap space open up, so they offered me a contract. And I had it in my mind. At the time, you could sign a five-year full mid-level. And at the time, it was like five years, 35. And at the time, I had put it in my head, that's what I was going to sign. I would have been 31 at the end of that deal. I didn't know if you know I would play as long as I did. So I'm thinking, like this is my one chance to get a big, long-term contract. It ended up being a three-year deal, and the third year was not guaranteed. <laughs> and I remember, and it was good money, man. Like I don't know why I said this, but I remember going back into the restaurant, and my wife was like, what did Arn say? And I was like, we're fucked. We're so <laughs> fucked. <laughs> we're so fucked. <laughs> and like... Do you think it's worse? Do you think it's worse now with Twitter and just with the 24 7 meme? Like, literally, it's like Josh shines a deal, and 10 seconds later, it's on like NBA Central as like, like, like everything happens so quickly now versus then it might have just been, you know, a newspaper story or something. A hundred percent, Tommy, because everybody knows your business, and we all get caught up in the comparison game. As they always say, comparison is the thief of joy. You know, mm-hmm. if, if, I don't yeah, know how many times you told me that shit last year, bro. Yeah. <laughs> how many times last year. Hey, what do you want to eat tonight? Maybe you want a home cooked favorite, but don't feel like going to the store, or you want something exciting and new, but don't want to go out. Well, DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is super easy and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code JJ. That's 25% off, up to a $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code JJ. That's an insane deal. Don't forget, that's code JJ for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Old Man and the Three listeners, I know y'all are going to appreciate this one. I'm excited to partner up and introduce you to Soul Savvy. It doesn't matter if you're an OG or new to the game, Soul Savvy is for every sneaker enthusiast looking to grow their collection. Beating the bots feels impossible and avoiding resellers is a lot tougher these days. Soul Savvy is here to help with this. It's built by sneakerheads for sneakerheads. Soul Savvy works at each stage of a shoe drop, making sneakers more fun and accessible for their members. When you join Soul Savvy, you get exclusive info like early access links and release guides, which serve as a one-stop shop for drop day. Soul Savvy monitors over 100 plus retailers and their inventory. The moment the sneakers are available, you get a direct link to purchase. They offer hands-on, one-to-one support from their team of experts, and with their latest assist tool, members get a speedy checkout process, which increases your chances at a W. Bottom line, Soul Savvy is creating a new experience for sneaker enthusiasts thanks to industry-leading tools, technology, and training. More importantly, they're bringing the fun back to sneakers and unlocking the resources that make sneakers more accessible. Avoid paying resale and join Soul Savvy today. Soul Savvy is offering Club Cool listeners 40% off your first month of their all access membership at soulsavvy.com slash JJ. That's 40% off your first month's membership at S O L E S A V Y.com slash JJ. Get the sneakers you want and avoid resell. Join Soul Savvy. Thank me later. Um, all right. So earlier today, uh, the Pelicans, Zion, David Griffin, everybody released a statement uh, saying that Zion is going to continue rehabbing. Um, I don't know if it's a setback or not, or if this is just a continuation of what he was doing, but I'm not trying to be crass because I, I I genuinely hope Zion plays basketball this season and Mm. and I'm a huge fan of Zion. But at this point, have, has the team, have you guys, have you sort of just basically resigned yourself to the feeling that he's not going to play basketball this season. 
Um, uh, I, th- I think for us, I think we we have to look at it that way because if we're sitting there um, counting down the days and looking towards like the time we get we can get Zion back, we're not going to reach the full you know full potential of us as a team and as, as individuals because we'll just keep like it's it's like we're trying to stay afloat until he can come save us, and that's not the case. Um, you know, we're, we have good pieces right now and we got to go out there thinking that, you know, this is who we have to, to hoop with for the rest of the year. And um, we get on a run and we, you know, get, you know, get into playoff contention and, and Z's uh, gets back healthy and he's and he comes back. That's just an added addition, you know, and, and that's going to make, you know, us even that much more dangerous. But right now we just got to go out there thinking like, yo, this group that we have right now is who we're going to be a mob with for the next you know, three months, and that's what we got to do. And if, you know, we, we get Z back, cool. If not, cool. You know, this is what we got to do right now. So, Josh, we've had him on the show. We've told, we have we praise him on the show all the time. But can you talk for a second about B.I. and his offensive skill set? Because it does seem like he seems to be taking uh, a leap every year. He's doing it in different ways. And, and uh, you know, we're both obviously big fans of his. But I'm just curious where you are with him now. Yeah, bro, it, it's it, it's great to see because Bi, as JJ knows, Bi as a person is a great dude, uh, just just a great kid. Um, so to see him being successful on the court um, has been great. I've been with him, you know, my five years in the league, and he's been taking just strides every year, every year, every year. And you know, right now, especially with Z out, you know, he's the first option. Teams know that. And he's not um, going out there and forcing things. He's not like, all right, I got to get up 25, 30 shots a game. And I got to, you know, everything got to go through me. He's going out there and taking what the defense gives him. Teams are blitzing him. He goes out there and makes the right play, gets off the ball. He won't get the assists on the box score, but he'll get a hockey assist. And he's a, he'll be the reason why we score in that possession or he'll be the reason why we win. And... Um, I got to give a lot of credit to, you know, my success to him because, um, you know, he's trusting other guys, putting the trust in us, putting the trust in myself to go out there when he gets blitzed to go out there and, and make plays and, um, you know, help the team. So he's someone who's just generally a great person, um, wants to win and willing to do anything to win. And it's, it's good to see him um, be successful. Um, I'm just – I'm just, bro, we're, we're just fighting because I, I want to see beyond the playoffs. I want to get in the playoffs, man. So we're, we're fighting for that. But um, it's great to see the strides that he's making, bro. It, it's it's really um, it's really great to, and, and fun to watch. You, you, you just said kind of what I was going to um, bring up here and that I would love to see B.I. in the playoffs on a winning team. And I know he's made an all-star game. But to me, he doesn't get his flowers. The flowers that he's due, he does not get. And, you know, I get asked about this all the time uh, in my new job. Uh, And you look across the league right now, and there's so many guys playing at such a high level. John Morant has been playing unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Fred Van Fleet is on a hot streak. Um, And, of course, you've got guys like Steph and Giannis and Jokic and KD, DeRozan, there's just so much high-level basketball right now. And it seems like week to week, the MVP kind of changes. The best player in the world. <laughs> Obviously, you, you could say like there's five guys that are the best player in the yeah. world, right? But like week to week, it's like... But it rotates. <laughs> it rotates. It does. It's it, And I've, I don't remember a season like this where there's so many guys playing such high-level basketball. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's. <laughs> uh, I think for us playing right now, it, it's not a good thing because, um, um, like you said, there's so many guys out there that's just hooping, bro. And it's it's great. Like right now, we're in a. Um, I think we won like, we won four in a row. I think we lost OKC when we 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 didn't have like uh, Jonas Kiel Bi, and then we beat Cleveland, um, and then we had you know a string of we had like four. It was like Milwaukee. And we had Utah and Phoenix on the back to back. We got uh, the Warriors tomorrow, and like, bro, it's just like every day for the, like just those guys. You have Giannis, you got CP, who's 
you know, one of the smartest guys in the league. You got, you know, Book, you got Steph. It, it's just Donovan Mitchell. It's just the list just keeps building. And it's it's fun to watch. It's fun to compete against these guys. But, um, man, sometimes it fucking sucks. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you defend? We were talking about Ja earlier today. How do you How are you supposed to defend Ja? Right now, you right now he's unguardable because if yeah, you right. go under the screen, he's shooting. Right now, in this in this streak, he's shooting like forty five percent, whatever forty for the year on four and a half shots a game. He he looks unguardable at times. Oh yeah, and um, I don't. I think we've played them already uh, once already. Um, but uh, fortunately for me, Herb Jones got that assignment. So um, <laughs> I think I think <laughs> I think I got Dylan Brooks. So. Um, I mean, it's it's tough, bro. And especially for guys like Herb. I, Herb is an amazing defensive player. He has strength. He has the athleticism. Um, he's smart. He's lengthy. But bro, you're going against some of the best dudes in the world, like in, in, in terms of putting the ball in the basket. And you, there's gonna be there's certain things you can't stop. Like I was guarding Gian, uh, Giannis at, uh, New Year's New Year's Day, and it was just certain things. I'm not gonna be able to stop. Like he, there was one time last year, bro. Like, I swear to God, I did, and I, I'm a pretty strong defender, post defender. Like, uh, he got the ball in the post. We're playing in Milwaukee, and I'm like, I'm, I'm putting all the resistance, I, resistance I have, and he just like he gets to the block and just turns around and just, just I swear, just drop the ball in. And I'm just, I'm like, hey, ain't shit I can do. Ain't, ain't nothing my five foot, five foot, uh, six foot five unathletic ass can do about these motherfuckers scoring. So, to answer your question, there's nothing you can do to stop them. You got, you got to hope it's an off day. Yeah, that recent game against uh, the Bucks, the, the when they were showing the the highlight clip the next morning, it was a lot of Josh Hart, a lot of Josh Hart guarding Giannis. <laughs> I, you know, like I said, like, bro, for, for me, like, I'm, I'm going to have some wins. I'm going to have some law, like, especially with some of these dudes. Like, for me, like, I'm 6'5", 220, 225. And, like, I, I'm, you know, I'm not the most athletic. So when, when you put guys like Giannis, like, don't get me wrong, I'm going to try my hard. I'm like a bull in the china shop. I'm, I'm going to do what I can do. But there's going to be certain times, like, on a fast break, he wants to take one dribble from half court and two steps and dunk the ball. Ain't anything I can do about it. I'm going to just have to sit there and make a bad decision to get the hell out the way. <laughs> wise, so, I mean, it's a wise choice. It's a wise choice. Um, Devontae Graham shot and the subsequent, the, the, the previous shot before that chase shot was one of the craziest sequences I've ever seen in the NBA. You were on the court for it. I assume I think he caught. I think it was four seconds left, up three. I assume GT was trying to foul Shea, and didn't quite execute it. He gave the effort, didn't quite execute it. He looked like he looked like a dad trying to chase after his like <laughs> little two year old son. That's that's what he looked like. Um, but no, bro, there, there was so many emotions going through there because, I mean, you're up three, so you're thinking we're going to foul. You know, he's he going. You know. Play a free throw game, we're going to get the win. And you know, Shea kind of got away, got away from G Temp and just shot. You know, uh, it, it wasn't like a smooth shot; it was an unorthodox shot, and just all net, just. And um, you know, for me, it was just kind of like, all right, well, we got one second. Let's just, I'm just throwing, I'm, I'm throw the ball to Tay, you know, and just he going to throw throw up some random shot. We're going to go into overtime. And that was my thought process about it. And, you know, luckily, um, Tay, I think, took, took one dribble and just just classed it. And it was probably one of – it was the second craziest ending of a basketball game I've ever seen. I was going to well, say. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right. Not the first. It was, you, got, well, you, got, you got one ace in the hole on this, in this way, to, way to bring up the championship. Yeah, right. it, bro. But I told you, like, those, those two times, bro, I swear, it was like – I've never seen because both of them were like ba like basically um, the exact same situations. Obviously, different shots, but the exact same situations. I've never seen like the the level of joy <laughs> to disappointment and vice versa, disappointment to joy of like in those two 
plays that in any like nothing in life i swear mirrored those two plays because they're seconds apart from each other you think you're going you know you change the game you're going into overtime or whatever and someone makes you know a shot and chris is with kind of a obviously a way easier shot but you know someone makes a 65 footer for game bro that's the most sickening feeling like <laughs> you're ever gonna have that's probably honestly that's probably why they like started they whooped up on us the the, the next game that we played them like the next week because <laughs> they were probably pissed off about that one i forgot that's right because marcus page hit a shot prior to chris's shot right yeah bro for like, we were same situation we were up three um and you know you we switch you know switch everything daniel chafu got on marcus page uh someone threw marcus page the ball for some reason daniel chafu uh dove for the ball i still have no idea why dio dove for the ball uh he could have just like stood there um but he dove for the ball and uh marcus got open threw up some bs while while crazy Ryan shot running yeah. At him. yeah and ryan's running at him so it wasn't like he just like was able to one two into a smooth shot he like was contorted his body shot it and honestly that's probably why i was so composed uh on in the in the okc game because i'm like i, I mean how, how coach Wright, how he always teaches like attitude i hate it now because but then it was just like attitude next play so it's like all right, he made it all right cool uh, let, let's move on from it so um two of the wildest that is painful when you think for marcus page that would have been one of the craziest shots in ncaa history if they had won that game oh yeah for sure and, and, to tie and up if, the finals in that in that moment yeah bro and and we were you know if, if that didn't went into overtime that would have been tough one because we they they had they had all the momentum they were i think they came back from like 10 we're like three minutes left they made that shot they were going to have all the momentum and it was and we were going to have uphill uphill battle but for some reason um was it i think it was, was it bryce johnson i think is his name uh the length the tall length yeah dude. bryce yeah for some reason he just decided not to guard chris jenkins who's a, a knockdown shooter so uh I, I really have to thank him for that one um <laughs> and for my national championship so um uh, but it for sure would have been you know one of the best shots Josh, before we let you go, um, besides having an abnormally large cranium, do you have anything you'd like to say about Jalen Brunson? I will say, first off, when you guys do it, he's gonna obviously going to have headphones on. Make him take his headphones off because his head is so huge and he has some really tiny ears. It's, it's like by far the weirdest combination ever. But um, but no, nah, he's, he's probably one of the smartest players uh, – you know, I, I've I've ever played with, and it, he I think we were actually talking about him last night. He's averaging like sixteen five and three. He's having like a, a, a great year, and you know I'm I'm hoping he just stays healthy and keeps souping because he's he'll be a free agent this year. He's gonna be able to get some of the money and just knowing the kind of kid that he is, and the fan that he has, man, it's I can't wait I can't wait for him. So um, yeah, but fuck him, you have the fat ass head. <laughs> All right, man. We'll end on that. We appreciate the time. Always good to catch up, bro. Always, my guy. All right, Later. man.